Hello, here's some more news. Lightning crash and organ music. I'm your booze dude, Cody Honst Coffin, Ghoulie Coffin. It's my legal name and I'd appreciate some sensitivity. Now, as you're all probably aware, people tend to stop living. And we're all generally like, terrified of that. And so, right as we get to the part of the year where all the crops die and it gets really cold and we fear for our lives just a little bit more, we took on an ancient Celtic festival and made it a Christian thing and then brought it to the West and then, like all holidays, slowly crafted oddly specific traditions and unhealthy consumables around it based on the input of various corporations, ensuring their survival by embedding themselves in American tradition which in this case is to embrace death by dressing up as various characters associated with our mortality through cultural myths and or dressing up so as to have sex with another person during a time when our increased awareness of death makes us more prone to being emotionally vulnerable right before the weather gets really cold and we shift our emphasis to goodwill and bright colors and togetherness so as to keep our spirits lifted during an otherwise colorless and unplentiful point in the year. And so then entertainers also looking for attention and ideas, will glom onto this event and often make a show themed around it. Anyway, happy that thing I just described. Hoping you're having a very fun that thing. And now, here's a show with spooky stuff. Right? We prepared some, we prepared some spooky stuff. Okay, do we have any spooky stuff to share? Okay, good. Okay, it's, um, hmm. It's like it's a, like a security video of a, a, a salad bar? Is that a... Oh, uh, I, I think something fell there. Probably wasn't placed on the rack correctly. Clerk was probably tired and overworked, and that's why maybe money shouldn't be a thing in general, but hmm. That was a haunted gas station that made the news? Because, you know, the internet. Okay, so there's exactly 10,000 videos you can find of ghosts on security cameras, just sort of hitting things slightly. Or like this half owl man someone saw, which appears to just be a man with maybe a thing behind him, like a couple of sticks. Or this couple who says a ghost scratched their baby, but also the ghost is just casually walking through the frame of a nanny cam like a regular alive person might do. There's a, there's a lot of this ghost hunting trash and it's not very scary. At least not for the reasons you'd expect. Which brings us to our first introductory segment called Ghost Hunters Are Scary, But Not For The Right Reasons. Ghost Hunters are kind of like Crispin Glover, in that we enjoy watching them, but probably don't want them in our house for very long. Of course, if you try to get them out, they will most likely just break back in at a later date, as Ghost Hunters regularly make the news for breaking into supposedly haunted places. Here are two of them who were arrested for breaking into the home of a man who just died. Like, imagine that. Imagine just becoming a ghost and still getting your ghost bearings. And the first damn thing you have to deal with is a couple of half-cocked Ackroyd wannabe polter guys rummaging through your worldly shit. That's like having your first ever bartending gig on New Year's Eve. Let the dead guy assimilate, you dicks. Even if they're not breaking and entering, a ghost hunter might be known to cause a fucking bomb scare by leaving equipment behind, or just be a dangerous menace in general, such as this celebrity ghost hunter who was arrested for scamming his fans by selling tickets to shows that were never booked and then canceling them by pretending he had cancer. And then there's the perfect combination of everything wrong with hazardous ghost hunting with this story of a paranormal investigator charged for trying to shoot a ghost with a gun, the thing ghosts most fear. So yeah, maybe if you have a ghost, you could just learn to live together. Ghosts are fine, you guys. They might occasionally possess your kid or make you solve their murder, but at least they aren't firing guns in your home. Instead, we're gonna focus on recent news in the non-ghost, still paranormal realm. Monster of the week type of nonsense. Stuff you could really toss a molder or two at. Let us start where everything starts, with goo. Stuff that clearly wants to body snatch us. This just in, the Paris Zoological Park recently unveiled their newest exhibit, a, a, a blob. Et le blob fait vraiment partie des choses les plus extraordinaires qui vivent sur Terre aujourd'hui. Mais ça fait des millions d'années qu'il est là, et on sait toujours pas vraiment ce que c'est. On sait pas vraiment si c'est un animal, si c'est un champignon, si c'est entre les deux.
While able to solve complex puzzles and containing 720 sexes, making it the poster child for everything Republicans hate, and the apparent ability to heal itself in two minutes like Wolverine, no one seems to know if this organism can be classified as a fungus or an animal based on its behavior. And according to the director of the Paris Museum of Natural History, if you combine two of these blobs, they will actually transmit their knowledge to each other. So that's unnerving. Also, it's apparently millions of years old, and when placed on a model of Tokyo and given food in the locations of various neighboring cities, the goo naturally mimicked the same pattern as the city's transit system. So if you happen to be an urban planner watching this, turns out that your job can be replaced by predator cum. Congratulations. Also, should we be, like, hiding from it? Feels like we should be hiding from it. It's just, it's just a suggestion, but we definitely should have a dialogue concerning the act of hiding from the smart blob. Other things we should probably discuss is whether or not it's a good idea to randomly thaw organisms we find frozen in ancient ice, a thing we are currently doing, along with thawing 40,000 ice worms, something that is literally an X-Files episode. Deep beneath the Arctic Circle, an ancient terror sleeps. Nothing can survive for a quarter of a million years. Waking it was their first mistake. Trying to stop it could be their last. We also keep finding microorganisms buried deep in the Earth and then just... just messing with them. And maybe, let's not. Just in case? Also, what the hell is this goo doing on the moon? Do we know yet? Can someone look into the moon goo? Is this why Elon Musk started selling flamethrowers? I mean, I, I don't want to be cavalier with my position as a news dude, but I'm gonna say definitely yes, that's why. Hey, speaking of outer space and things that probably want us dead, let's get to our next haunted segment called Aliens are the best case scenario. Whether they're bursting from or into our hearts. Everyone knows that aliens are dumb and can suck it, and we'd totally kick their ass in a war, and I invite any alien listening to come and just try to take us on. I fucking dare you, Alf. Also, UFOs absolutely exist, at least according to a group called Navy. Also Blink-182, because these are confusing times in which we exist. Now, you might be stressed at the possibility of an extraterrestrial presence, but when it comes to certain news stories, that might actually be the best possible scenario. Especially if it turns out we're in some kind of awesome space zoo and currently wowing a crowd of no doubt horrified cosmic onlookers. It's the kind of theory that makes you want to go outside and defiantly scream obscenities at the sky so that alien parents are forced to cover the ears of their children. It's a thing you should definitely do right now. That certainly beats this MT Tech Professor's theory that UFOs are time machines of future dickheads coming to watch our pain, most likely while masturbating inside their temporal saucers. Those sick f**ks. Anyway, check out these mutilated cattle recently found in Oregon. According to NPR, the dead bulls all resembled giant deflated plush toys and had no signs of an animal attack, gunshot wounds, or even scavengers. All of them were completely bloodless and had their tongues and genitals surgically cut out. People are naturally assuming it was aliens, which, if you think about it, is hopefully what it is. Because the alternative is that a person or group of people snuck into a ranch and was able to overpower and meticulously pull a Dahmer on a bunch of 2,000 pound animals. For some reason. A reason that I'm betting wasn't a fun alien experiment type of reason. Equally unnerving are the recent sky explosions currently distressing residents of a Cleveland neighborhood. The mysterious explosions in Cleveland's Slavic Village neighborhood continue. In the middle of the night, it wakes you up, or you could be watching TV and it's a boom, boom, boom. Captured on home security systems, residents want answers. The explosions apparently come in the middle of the night and were initially attributed to a local steel plant who have since denied being the cause. Nor has the city given an answer of what they could possibly be. So either we have to assume it's aliens or that the city of Cleveland is planning something they don't want us to know about that apparently involves testing how to bomb the sky. But that's enough speculation because it's time to move on to our next spooky-tacular segment of the damned! Definitely a monster. Life can get pretty complicated. 
So sometimes it's nice to take a moment to sit back and reflect on how there are definitely monsters that exist and want to eat us. Unsure whether or not a spider can be big enough to consume a possum? Well, don't worry, because Snopes has confirmed that they can indeed get big enough to consume a possum. In fairness, that is a pygmy possum, and the spider in question is only about 12 inches in length. So, don't you feel better now? Look at you, resting easy knowing that the spider is only the size of your human face. But hey now! Spiders are too easy, and honestly, most of them are pretty rad, and you should be friends with them. Let's stop perpetuating myths and talk about the real danger that is wolf people. Specifically, this obvious wolf person that was shot dead while transforming from lichen to human. As evidenced by local authorities failing to identify the species due to it having teeth too small to be a wolf, but perfect for some naked dupe slurping in his bloody fur as the full moon wanes. What a jerk this wolf person was. Related to that, here's the story of a mysterious creature roaming the Scottish Highlands, neatly stripping the skin off of sheep before consuming them and leaving behind a cartoonishly bare skeleton. Just shucking those lamb chops like they were damn corn. To be fair and balanced, it should be noted that locals aren't speculating a dog-like creature, but rather some kind of large cat as this is exactly the kind of serial killer sh a feline would do. So that's above sea level. But what about below? Must we be doomed to battle these brutes of the Terra whilst the likes of James Cameron live peacefully in their undisclosed aquatic chateaus? Well, good news, everyone who didn't direct Titanic and will direct four Avatar sequels, because our time of reckoning will soon burst forth from the sea like the crowning head of baby Satan. I speak, of course, about the 1,000-pound underwater observatory that recently vanished without a trace off of Germany's Baltic coast, leaving behind a single shredded cable as the grim harbinger of what's yet to be. According to the BBC, both weather and animals have been ruled out thanks to the weight of the device, nor is the area legally open to any boating. That leaves us with a lot of exciting choices between the obvious Lovecraftian nightmare to the more quaint existence of ghost pirates. Personally, this news dude is hoping for some kind of combination of everything we've talked about so far, like a, like a time-traveling werewolf grifter thief who fakes illnesses and ejaculates sentient worms. I call him Fakie, the interdimensional worm comer, and t-shirts will be available soon. Hey! Speaking of horrifying things that you can own, horrifying things that you can own. Hey, you rich f**k. Want to be found dead of mysterious circumstances? Perhaps you should make your next big rich jerk purchase a delightful cursed summer home that you can get all kinds of haunted inside. Here's one in Adelaide, Australia that was recently listed for brave people only. The five bedroom estate featuring an obviously haunted kitchen, obviously haunted dining room, Obviously haunted parlor, obviously haunted bedroom, obviously haunted outdoor pool, obviously haunted living room, obviously haunted entryway, and then the basement, which looks totally fine and nothing to worry about. Just one of those normal basements. The listing also includes a small chapel that, according to the real estate site, no one knows why it exists, but has been turned into a bathroom and is obviously haunted. Or maybe not, and you should often and heartily dump out in the forsaken chapel bathroom. But perhaps you need a home, but aren't 100% keen on a betrayed specter resulting in your bloated corpse being discovered in a paralyzed state of post-mortal fear. If you're looking for something a little more Cape Fear-esque, can I interest you in this recently sold but maybe soon to be back on the market New Jersey home where, for the past five years, the previous owners received a series of anonymous letters from someone calling themselves The Watcher, who claimed to be a protector of the house, quote, put in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming. Going on to add, quote, my grandfather watched the house in the 1920s and my father watched in the 1960s. It is now my time. Do you know the history of the house? Do you know what lies within the walls of 657 Boulevard? Why are you here? I will find out. And then finishing with the totally not unnerving question, quote, do you need to fill the house with the young blood I requested? End of quote. 
followed by a jaunty, quote, once I know their names, I will call to them and draw them to me, end of quote. So, so yeah, they sold that house for way under the asking price because of the cultist, probably. But to be fair, maybe they just didn't like the neighborhood. Anyway, in like two to three months, I'm sure you can scoop this one up for the low, low price of however much we're charging for fakie the interdimensional worm comer shirts. So $10,000 and a thorough wash. But also, if you have 10 of $1,000 laying around and are looking for some kind of immediate and macabre purchase capable of simulating the dusty cocoon of a haunted puzzle of your own making, then might I suggest this decaying Leonardo suit from Ninja Turtles 3 that is currently on sale. While it looks mid-rapture, it actually isn't all that much worse than when it was in peak form. <laughs> They went back in time for that one. Anywho, that's probably good for options of things to die inside. Let's really end on a high note with our final ghoul category called Fun Pranks by Dead Things. Plot twist. It turns out that you can be dead and still pretty cool. You can even have an active go of it thanks to this study that found that human bodies will often move around after they die looking for a more comfortable position in which to rot. While that's a pretty fun way to punk the living, it's not really that dynamic in terms of stuff that dead things can do. Here's a guy in Iowa who woke up to find his entire basement flooded in blood. If you happen to be looking for some free blood, then that's pretty great news, which sadly wasn't the case in this instance. Also, it turns out it was just animal blood, and he shared a drainage system with a neighbor less than unwilling to dump animal parts in his drain. So, less cool. How about a genuine prank from a super dead person? Hello? Let me out! Where the f are we? Hello? Now, this might take a second to explain, because as of right now, you just watched a man get buried alive while a crowd of onlookers laughed at his torment. But that's the funeral of veteran Shay Bradley who, upon realizing he had a fatal illness, recorded a fun message to be played from his coffin at the inevitable funeral. Like, he learned he was gonna die and thought, this is a good opportunity for a chuckle. So basically, just the raddest thing you can do in the face of death, and good on him. Hello again, hello. I just called to say goodbye. So yeah, scary times and news and stuff. Although, I don't feel like we quite hit our peak in terms of raw fear. I mean, someone should really look into those drained cows from before, I can't stress that enough. But other than that, I'm not scared at all. So let's spin the wheel and see if we can get one last spooky story, huh? Bring out wheel that looks like a spider. Spin wheel until it lands on a videotape. Bring out VHS television combination and then play tape on that. If there's no time for any of that to happen, just read this out loud, then play the clip. After 17 days and 16 nights, a fork in the sky led to a miracle. They all of a sudden they said, should we go to the right or should we go to the left? We said, let's go to the right. And it was like divine intervention. Riding in a rescue chopper, Troy Helmer and Chris Burquist discovered Amanda Eller clinging to life on a waterfall in the Hawaiian rainforest. Uh, okay. What? I mean, that's, that's a nice story about a hiker found after being missing for 17 days. I'm not sure why it belongs in our spooky special. Way to go, me, the person in charge of this show. You know, I, I have a strong sense of internal guidance, whatever you want to call that, a voice, spirit, who, everybody has a different name for it. Heart, um, my heart was telling me, walk down this path, go left, great. Go right. It was so strong. Go left. Go right. Go left. Right. I'm like, great. This is so strong that obviously when I turn around and go back to my car, it's going to be just as strong when I go back, but it wasn't. So I, I took a, a break. Um, I sat down. I laid down on a tree. I was looking at the sky. And when I got up and I tried to go back the way that I came, which I had a sense of direction at that point, the path was not leading me back to my car. And I tried all these different paths. And then I was like, oh, shoot, these are not bike paths. These are not walking paths. These are boar paths. So the boar paths were just leading me into boar's dens. They, 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 can, they can control our minds now? F that, man. F that. I'm not letting them anywhere near my mind, brah. No, no. That is, 
That is not cool. I have to admit, that one got me. The one about psychic boars telepathically luring a woman into the woods before attacking anyone who tried to find her? Yeah, that one got me. Anyway, that's been our video about scary news. Stay tuned when we go back to talking about the regular news, which is definitely not scary at all. Right? Happy Halloween, everybody. We got nominated for a streamy for news, so that's weird. But thank you so much for your support. And if you'd like to continue that support, we got a patreon.com slash some more news. Leave a like and a comment and subscribe and the YouTube stuff. And our podcast is called Even More News. We have merch, um, maybe like that disgusting t-shirt I mentioned in this episode, but also other stuff. And you know what else? Nothing.